Hi everyone, and welcome to Graphite. I'm going to be giving you a basic introduction and demonstration of the Graphite command line interface and web app, showing you how it can power your stacked PR workflow. The notion of stacked PRs originates from big companies like Facebook, Google, and Uber, who are obsessed with optimizing developer productivity and moving fast. They've even built a slew of internal tools like Fabricator at Facebook and Critique at Google to power this workflow almost entirely. So before we get started, what are stacked PRs? Many developers today use what's called a feature-based workflow, where a developer creates a branch that contains all of the changes for the feature they're creating. The branch is usually pretty large, long-lived, hard to review since there's so much code, and a pain to merge into production after it's been approved. It's also hard to parallelize dependent tasks and collaborate with other engineers in this workflow, since the dev needs to wait for their feature branch to be approved and merged before starting a new task or handing things off to a teammate. Graphite promotes a trunk-based workflow, where developers use small, concise PRs that are based off of one another. In the Graphite workflow, each PR in the stack is a branch, oftentimes with only one commit that's continuously being changed or amended. The user frequently syncs changes from main and restacks or rebases their changes to resolve merge conflicts as they go, so their final merge is painless. Breaking the final change into several smaller PRs has several benefits. Users can request specific reviews from different stakeholders on each code change, and they can stay unblocked even though they're waiting for their code to be reviewed by continuously adding changes to the top of the stack. When all the PRs have been approved, contain no merge conflicts, and are passing all checks, they can be merged into the main branch as a stack. Let's take a look at how we can do all of this with Graphite. At Graphite, we work with a lot of React, TypeScript, and JavaScript, so I'll be using an example React 2048 game implementation for this demonstration. You can start stacking PRs locally using the Graphite CLI inside of any Git repository as long as you've initialized Graphite there using GT repo in it. Every Graphite command begins with GT and usually has a main command and a subcommand, as you'll see later. One of the first commands I like to show people is GT log since it shows you the current state of your repository and what your stacks look like. Stacks are essentially just DAGs based off of your main branch, and each branch in the stack is essentially a node in the graph. You can see that we have two independent stacks checked out. Each one is based off of main, one for the game itself and one for the game server. You can also tell that the React app stack is contained locally and hasn't yet been submitted, while the game server stack has already been merged and is associated with the PR by the graphite links here, but we'll deal with that later. You can tell where you are in the stack by the filled in node and the word current near the branch name. You can also use GT log short for a smaller, more concise stack visualization that doesn't take up as much vertical space in your terminal. Every graphite command has an alias to help speed up your workflow. For example, GTL is the same as GT log and GTLS is the same as GT log short. You can see a list of all of our commands and their aliases in the CLI command reference at the end of our documentation or linked in the description below. To navigate between branches in a stack, you can use GT branch checkout or GT BCO for short. You'll see an interactive picker that allows you to select and check out branches in your stack so that you can quickly make and commit changes where needed. You can also provide this command with a specific branch name like GT BCO main to go directly to a branch of your choice. As I'm switching between branches in the stack, you'll notice that the files in my repository are being updated accordingly. All GT commands are just executing vanilla Git commands under the hood, and here we're just checking out branches locally as we would in Git. Now that you know how to visualize and navigate between branches in the stack, it's time to create our first change. First, I'm gonna navigate to the top of my stack using GT branch top or GTBT. Since I have multiple stacks checked out locally, I'm asked which stack I'd like to go to the top of, and I'll go ahead and select my React game stack. When I do GTLS, I can confirm that I'm in fact at the top of my stack with the filled in node here. The suggested graphite workflow is slightly different than what you're used to. Unlike Git, where you create a branch and add changes to it, graphite recommends that you do the opposite, create your changes, create a branch, and then add those changes to the branch. I'm going to add some CSS styling to our game here. Now let's see what's changed using GT status. You'll notice that status isn't actually a command that's recognized by Graphite, but that's okay. Graphite has a feature called git pass through that makes it easy to use git commands where you need to. 
Any commands that aren't implemented or recognized by Graphite will be passed through directly to Git, and status is one of these. Let's stage the new changes we've made using GT add. Now, we'll create a new branch with our changes using the following command. I know that's a lot, so let's go ahead and break this command down. GT branch create creates a new branch on top of the branch you currently have checked out, and the dash m tag takes a commit message for the initial commit on the branch. I've included a branch name here, CSS styling, but if I omit this branch name, Graphite will automatically create one for me using the commit message I entered. I can change the name of my branch at any time using GT branch rename and entering a new branch name to replace the old one. Let's do a GTLS to see our changes. And there we go. We've added another branch to this stack using the Graphite CLI. Staging all changes and creating a branch is a flow that's done pretty frequently in Graphite. And this command actually does it all in one go. The additional A tag stages any pending changes while also creating a branch with the first commit. We have a Graphite command cheat sheet for a few of these combination or shortcut commands that we find ourselves using pretty often. So be sure to check that out in the description below as you get more comfortable with using Graphite. So we've added some styling to our game, and now it's time to put the stack up for review. I can do that by running GT stack submit or GTSS for short. Stack submit creates independent PRs for each of the branches in the stack I currently have checked out, starting with the first branch in the stack. I can edit the title, the body, which I'm going to skip because I prefer to edit the body in the Graphite web app, and choose to publish or draft the PR. The CLI will continue to prompt me to do all these things for each of the PRs in my stack. If you prefer not to, you can use the no edit flag to skip these prompts entirely. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the rest of the PRs in the stack. After stack submit completes, the Graphite CLI spits out the open PR links for all of the PRs in the stack that I've created. If I do GT log, you'll notice that each of these branches is now associated with an open PR. Before I submitted them, they just existed locally on my machine and there was no graphite link or status next to each of the branches like there is now. Let's quickly talk about addressing feedback. Let's say that each of the PRs in my stack have different reviewers and one of my reviewers has requested that I add some tests to the game logic branch in my stack. I'm going to GTBCO to move down to the correct branch in the stack. And I'm going to pretend to add some tests using touch game logic tests. From here, I have two options. I can either amend the current commit on the branch to include my tests, or I can create a new commit on the branch entirely. This is totally up to you and your team's workflow, but since Graphite views branches as a unit of change rather than commits, it doesn't really matter what you decide to do here. To amend the current commit on the branch, we'll first stage our changes using GT add and amend using gt commit amend, or gtca for short. This pulls up an interactive commit message editor so I can edit the commit message, and there you go. We've edited a branch in the middle of the stack. You'll notice that the messaging from the command line here, that Graphite actually automatically restacks the branches above my current branch for me. Luckily, my change didn't conflict with any of the upstack branches, but if it did, this is where Graphite would prompt me to resolve my merge conflicts before proceeding with my amend action. To update my stack and re-request reviews after making a change, all I have to do is run GTSS one more time, and my current PR will be updated along with any upstack PRs as you'll see here. It'll go ahead and spit out new PR links for me as well. Finally, one of the most critical parts of a trunk-based workflow is frequently syncing changes from and rebasing onto main or whatever your trunk branch is. The command to do this is gt repo sync or gtrs for short. If I run that here, you'll notice that Graphite prompts me to delete both of the game server branches that I had locally, since it detected that they had already been merged into main as we kind of talked about a little bit earlier. I'll go ahead and say yes, and yes. Now, if I run gtls, You'll see that Graphite is telling me that a few of my branches need to be restacked or rebased onto the new changes. I can go ahead and do that by doing GT stack restack or GTSR for short. Once again, I can resubmit any of the rebased changes using GTSS 
and my stack is up to date with main and ready to be reviewed. As part of your graphite workflow, we recommend doing a GT repo sync and a GT stack restack pretty frequently while you're working on changes, so you're always working on a fresh update of main. Before jumping to the Graphite dashboard, let's first take a look at the GitHub side of things. As you may know, Graphite has full bi-directional sync with GitHub, meaning any PRs you create in Graphite will be visible in GitHub and vice versa. This includes comments, adding reviewers, assignees, editing description, so on and so forth. If there are people on your team who don't use Graphite, this means they can still review your PRs in GitHub. One of the ways we facilitate viewing Graphite PRs on GitHub is through the stack comment at the top of the page. It has a similar structure as GT Log Short and shows you which PR in the stack you're currently viewing with this little finger emoji here. Each of these branches is linked directly to the PR in GitHub, so your reviewer understands the context of and can quickly switch between all of your changes, even if they aren't using Graphite. Now, let's go ahead and jump to the equivalent pages in Graphite. If you have the Graphite Chrome extension installed, you can actually just click this button to jump to the Graphite PR page directly. The Graphite PR page is structured a little bit differently than GitHub's. The first thing you'll notice is that the code is on the center of the page and not tucked away behind any sort of tabs. I can edit the title of my PR by clicking here, and I can click this dropdown to see which version of the PR I'm currently viewing. A PR version is incremented each time a change is pushed to the PR, and you can even adjust which PR version you'd like to see on the left and right hand side of your diff. For example, if I'm reviewing a PR for the second time, I can adjust the PR version to ensure that I'm only seeing changes since my last review. Graphite will also show you a banner anytime a PR has been updated to make sure these are the changes that you're seeing. The dropdown right next to the PR title and the version is the stack visualization. I can open this menu and quickly jump between PRs in the stack and see their mergeability status at a glance. As you can see, the stack is entirely waiting for my reviewer's approval. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the top PR in the stack, which adds the new CSS styling to our 2048 game. I want to give my reviewer a better idea of what this PR is doing, so I can go ahead and edit the description of this PR by clicking this button here and entering a live preview markdown editor. I'm going to add a quick summary to this PR. And I can also drag and drop any images, videos, or GIFs to wherever my cursor currently is positioned. When I save my edits, this will be saved to GitHub's description as well. Moving on to the info panel of the PR page, I can see whether or not my PR has merge conflicts with the space branch. I can also see its current check status and the list of status checks with the option to rerun or view details on GitHub as necessary. Right under that, I can see a list of the reviewers that have been requested on this PR, and I can add or remove reviewers as necessary. I can add labels or assignees to the PR as well as I would on GitHub. As an author, it might be necessary for me to annotate specific areas of the code for my reviewer to see. I can scroll down to the code and click a line number to add a comment. Starting this thread will start a bash commenting experience. In order to leave my final comment, I can hover over this bar here and click just add comments. To add an issue level comment, I can scroll down to the bottom of the timeline of this PR here and I can say hello and this comment will be posted immediately and it'll indicate which version it was posted on as well. One more thing I wanted to note is that the merge button of this PR has a warning icon next to it. Since I'm the admin of this repository, I can use my admin permissions to override and merge this PR despite the missing reviews. GitHub gives you this option as well. If I wasn't an admin, this merge button would be disabled until all branch protection rules were properly met. You can see whether or not a PR is mergeable by the PR status pill over here or if the merge button is enabled. To show you the reviewer side of things, I've gone ahead and logged in with a different Graphite account whose review has been requested on our 4PR stack. As a quick note, you can change your color theme preferences in your Graphite app settings, along with any other app preferences that you have. In this case, I've switched to dark mode to help differentiate between author and reviewer for this demonstration. The first thing you'll see when entering the Graphite web app is your pull request inbox, which we like to consider kind of an email client for your PRs. I can configure which repos I'll see PRs for by clicking and selecting several default repos from this picker on the left hand side here. Graphite creates a few default sections with pre-configured filters we think you'll use most frequently, but you can also create your own custom sections in order to surface PRs that are most important to you. 
To create a custom section, I can click add a section here and I can filter on different conditions like review status, title contains, has label, username, so on and so forth. In my needs review section, I can also see the stack that we just put up for review earlier. At a glance, I can see things like review status, whose review has been requested on the PR, number of unresolved threads, its position in the stack, CI and merge conflict status, as well as the size of the change. By default, these sections will sort PRs by when they were last updated, but I can adjust that by the sort setting here. Let's go ahead and jump to the first PR in the stack. I can leave single line comments in the code by clicking a line number like so, or I can also leave multi-line comments by clicking and dragging across multiple lines of code. As a reviewer, as soon as I start my first comment thread, I'll officially enter my review. Every comment that I leave after this will be batched and I can submit my final review with all of my comments by hovering over this review bar here. I'm gonna scroll down and leave one more comment in the code. And you'll also see that my review bar number of comments updates as I leave more comments in the code. If I wanna leave a one-off comment or a top level comment, I can scroll down to the bottom of my timeline and post a comment here. As soon as I'm done with my review, I can hover over this review bar to leave my final review at any point. At Graphite, we like to keep code review fun and lighthearted. You can invoke macros using the forward slash character to include memes from your org's configurable meme library. Funnily enough, this is one of the things we find ex-Facebook engineers to miss most from Fabricator. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a meme here, and then I can improve this PR. I'll see a little toast prompting me to head to the next PR in the stack so I can stay in the same frame of thought and minimize time spent navigating away from the page while I'm reviewing a stack of PRs. So I'm going to go ahead and click review next PR. To make things even easier, the Graphite web app has shortcuts for almost everything, including moving between PRs in the stack and approving or requesting changes. I can go ahead and click RY to approve this PR, go to the next PR in the stack, hit RY again to approve that one, go to the final PR in the stack, and I can finally hit RY one more time. Note, you can always hit the question mark key to see a full list of keyboard shortcuts that Graphite supports at any point in the app. Now that I've reviewed all the PRs in this stack as the reviewer, I'm gonna go ahead and log back in as the author so we can take a look at how to merge all these PRs as a stack. Switching back over to the author side of things and also back to light mode, I can see from my PR inbox that all of my four PRs in my stack have been moved to the approved section because they've been approved. If I head over to the first PR in the stack, I can scroll down to see any comments that my reviewer left on the code, including their review. If I click on any inline comments on the timeline, it'll jump me directly to the point in the code which my reviewer left the comment. I can also add a reply and any replied comments will be posted as one-off rather than batched. So this comment will be posted immediately. One of the best parts about using the Graphite UI is that you can merge all of the PRs in your stack at once rather than one by one and rebasing all the changes manually. Since I'm at the bottom of my stack, the merge button for this PR just says merge. But as soon as I navigate to the top of my stack, the merge button now says merge four. Let's go ahead and merge this stack of PRs. If I click merge, it'll open this merge modal where I can configure settings like my merge strategy and the commit message on each of my PRs. I'm just going to keep all these settings the same and go ahead and merge all four of these PRs. If I go back to my inbox, each of these PRs has moved into the merging and recently merged section instead of the approved section. Each of these PRs will be consecutively marked as merged while Graphite takes care of all of the rebasing and merging in between each of the PRs in the stack. And there you have it. That was a quick walkthrough of what it's like to create, review, and merge a stack of PRs using Graphite CLI and web app. Thousands of engineers at some of the world's fastest moving companies choose Graphite to enable their workflow, and we hope this gave you a little insight as to why. Graphite has a few other team productivity features like insights, Slack notifications, and the merge queue that weren't covered here, so be sure to check out our website and documentation in the description below to see how your team can get the most out of Graphite. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in our Slack community, also linked below, or email support at graphite.dev.